Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of our look at the upcoming games on Nintendo Switch next week. Now last week Glenn was moaning about how bad the games were coming up. I don't know what he was worrying about. This week looks absolutely delightful. First things first, we have Trine 2 Complete Story. Now this was originally released on PC and it is a fantasy action platformer with physics based puzzles and fairy tale adventures. It's an award winning game and it does look absolutely lovely, it's not one I've ever played before. There's over 20 levels, you can travel through breathtaking environments including a castle by the sea, a burning desert and snowy ice mountains. There's three heroes to choose from, Amadeus the wizard, Pontius the knight and Zoya the thief, each with their own skills. And best of all, there's online and local co-op multiplayer. It's retailing at £15.29, so probably about $19. And it looks really nice. It's releasing on the 18th. The next game is Stein's Gate Elite, and it's the game of the anime. Here you have a fully animated adventure with brand new scenes. You follow a group of young tech savvy lab members who discover the means of changing the past via email using a modified microwave. Yeah, sounds awesome. Wow, man. Every choice you make has its own consequences, shifting the world line closer or further from reaching 1% divergence. I haven't got a clue what this is talking about. Overall though, for £53.99, yikes, it better be good. It's releasing on the 19th. Our next game is a little bit more light-hearted and easy to understand. It's Blaze Rush. It looks like a cross between Micro Machines and Mario Kart. It's retailing at £10.79, probably around about $12 to $15. You can play up to four players locally and up to eight players over the internet. Yes, please. It's got couch versus couch, so start races locally with friends, connect to the game at any time, dozens of fun tracks on three planets, and there's 16 cars and a variety of weapons to use. This releases on the 19th for fans of micro machines like myself. Okay, I won't spend too long talking about this next one. It's Aragami Shadow Edition. It's a very good stealth game. A little bit like Metal Gear Solid combined with Tenchu. It releases on the 21st and it will cost you about £23. This next one is called Exmorph Defense. You play as an alien species that invades Earth to harvest its resources and terraform the surface. You have to strategize in build mode by carefully selecting various types of alien towers or you can throw yourself right in to the heat of battle. It's more of a strategy tower defense game. You build towers anywhere on the map, destroy obstacles, collapse buildings and bridges to change the enemy paths. But it also has shooter elements. You can engage the enemy directly with the X Morph Fighter and morph into four distinct fighter forms, each one with a different weapon and special ability. There's a single player story campaign and also survival mode. It's launching at 20% off on the 21st. That will give the enemies a hard time getting through to your base. There are many types of towers to choose from each of them good against a different kind of enemy. The humans are going to fight fiercely, so prepare for a true test of your skills. While making numerous optimizations...
I am going to absolutely butcher this pronunciation. The next game is Yamaniki Dream Diary. I know that was so wrong. It looks really interesting, this one. You play as a young girl as she explores the mysterious and unreal world of her dreams. Start off with no story or guide as you experience the different worlds of her dreams, each one deeply shrouded in mystery. Seems to be a game where you run and hide from various monsters. There are seven doors that exist within the dream from which you can freely go through to different worlds as many times and in whatever order you like. It launches at £14.39 and that's 20% off on the 21st. The next game is Hell Warders from P-Cube, and this looks more my jam. It's an action RPG meets tower defense. You control powerful heroes, unleash devastating abilities, and deploy strategic defensive units in this brand new sub-genre title. You can set up archers, knights, mages, and catapults, choose their position, upgrade their abilities, and create the strongest resistance possible. My favorite part, though, is that it has four-player co-op and online matchmaking. Thank you very much. This is releasing at a paltry £10.99, so you're looking probably $12, $13 in the US on the 21st of February. QUBE2 or Cube2 looks to be a Portal clone and I'm really surprised we haven't seen Portal yet on the Nintendo Switch. This is described as a first person puzzle adventure sequel to Cube1. Use special gloves to solve puzzles of the mysterious world and find your way back home. There are 11 puzzle areas and over 80 individual puzzles. You can explore diverse environments that expand the world of the original and experience an all new adventure and brand new characters. The visuals on this one look absolutely beautiful. It's £22.99, probably about $25, and it releases on the 21st. You may not remember, but if you listen to me and do as I say, we may actually make it back home. Done. Rotating Brave reminds me a lot of the game Downwell that I just bought. You conquer a pixel art dungeon while both you and the screen rotate. It's essentially a side scroller until you tilt the screen to go down. Well, <clears throat> it's essentially a well, isn't it? And then it becomes a slightly different game. It's a nice mechanic, but whether or not it'll actually be fun and not just a gimmick remains to be seen. I still like the idea. At such a cheap price, it might be worth looking at when it releases on the 21st. Now I know for a fact I'm not the only one that likes these hard as nails platformers. Almost there the platformer is essentially a Super Meat Boy clone and it's very well priced if you're a fan of this genre. It's got over 150 stages and time challenges and there really isn't much more to say. It costs £7.19 so probably about $10 and releases on the 21st.
This next game is called Gigantic Army. It looks right up Glen's Alley to be fair. It describes itself as a heartfelt homage to 16-bit era mech shooters. It's the 21st century and Earth is at war with the Ramelons, an alien race determined to stop humanity's advance into space. Oh boy. 67 points for originality. There's nothing original here whatsoever, but it releases at a reasonable price of eight pounds and probably around $10 in the US on the 21st. The next game is Warplanes World War II Dogfight. Catchy name. Oh, listen to this. This is straight from the developer's mouth. Switch up your strategies with the wide variety of warplanes available in this thrilling, light combat action game. They get extra points for using Switch Up in their name. Nice one. I've played a bit of this already, and it combines dogfighting, which is very arcadey, with some strategic base building and management that's a lot more interesting than the actual flying part. I might review this one, I'm not sure yet. It was quite simplistic, but I had a bit of fun for an hour or two earlier on. Just a few world powers. Harbour for Stanton. Roger that, sir. Military air forces have formed a special squadron to strike precisely and effectively in the most crucial operations. Now, Devil Engine looks nice. It's a schmuck in the vein of our type and you can use three shot types with unique bombs to destroy everything in your path, chain up loads of combos, there are eight different game modes to play through and you can spend your accumulated points to unlock in-game shaders, additional music stages and playable ships. But the best part of this one for me is the beautiful soundtrack which was composed by the famous, and again, I am so sorry, anyone that's Japanese, no, I'll just put the name up on the screen. It's composed by that guy. It costs £17.99 or $20 and launches on the 21st. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments if you are going to pick up any of these games. Can you believe, Switch Up family, that we hit 20,000 subs in not much over a year? That is all because of you guys and we really appreciate it. Let's get to 50. Thanks as always for watching and for all things Switch, all the time. Keep it switch up. See ya!